Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share some tips and ideas within their industry. And today I have Katie, and Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. And I want you to explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Katie Barber. I am a online marketing consultant. I specialize in social media and blogging. And I've been doing this for about 10 years, ever since Facebook started up 15 um, years ago. And I love it. I worked for an internet marketing firm for, for a while, and now I do social media consulting for several different industries on the web. Okay. So we're going to talk about social media in terms of how maybe a business should use it. So mm -hmm. why is it so important for um, a business to utilize social media? There are several different reasons why you need to be using social media as a business. Number one is brand awareness. Social media is another way to get your name out there. Um, there are so many people using Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. There's just It doesn't make any sense not to be on social media, especially because it's free for the most part. Uh, number two, it's good for search engine optimization benefits. For those of you who want to build your website up on Google, uh, get up on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, set up those profiles, and the search engines will reward you for it. Thirdly, you want to be on social media to handle customer relations. You want to connect with your target or audience in a way that they understand and in a way that they use on a regular basis. Social media is a great way to do that. It's free. Um, it's probably the easiest way to connect with people. And, you know, they're always using it. They're always on Facebook. And not only will you reach your audience, but you'll reach their friends. Um, so that's a really big reason why you want to be on social media. Okay. With all the um, social networks that are out there, can you uh, kind of give us a, uh, some insight as which one is the best? It's hard to say. It really depends on your industry. It depends on who you're trying to reach, who your target demographic is. Uh, for instance, if you're a B2B company, you definitely want to be on LinkedIn. It's the number one corporate networking website in the world. There's over 250 million users, I think, um, as well as Google+. Plus. Um, but if you're more B2C, so if you're in food and bev or uh, a hotel, or a clothing designer, you want to be on the more visual websites like Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook um, because that's where, that's where your market is. That's where they're sharing those pictures and they're getting ideas, they're shopping online um, through these social networks. So it, it depends on who you're trying to reach and you know, what your competitors are doing, what websites they're, that they're currently using to reach their market because um, you kind of want to do the same thing as your competitors, make sure that you're on the same networks and they're not pushing you down. Um, there's also what I like to call the big seven. And they're the seven most influential social networks on the web. If you have a profile set up on these seven networks, you are more likely to appear in the search engines, you're more likely to get in front of the people you want to get in front of, and ultimately be more su successful on the web. And those seven are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, Pinterest, and Instagram. And it's a lot of networks, <laughs> it's a lot of time, a lot of setup, um, but once you're set up and active, um, the search engines will see that, they'll reward you for it, um, and if somebody goes looking for you on one of those websites, you're already there, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so you did mention it's a lot of time to set up. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously a lot of time to maintain, especially if you were well, I mean, if you're doing two or three, it's a lot of, to maintain. So how do you find time to do such a thing? Well, actually, once you set up everything, um, you want to see which websites are actually working for you. You don't want to spend hours and hours a day on the social networks that aren't bringing in any sales. Um, so after three months or so, you see Facebook is working, is working well for you or YouTube is working well for you. Um, then concentrate more on those. You don't want to waste time on on LinkedIn or Google Plus if it's not bringing in any, any traffic to your website. Um, there's also a bunch of really good social media management tools like Hootsuite and TweetDeck. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, Facebook will allow you to schedule your posts ahead of time so you can nail everything down on a Monday and it's set for the rest of the week. Um, once you have everything set up and you realize what's working for you, all you need is 20 minutes a day to keep everything updated and connect with your audience online. Um, really the biggest time consumer is creating the content that you want to share. Um, you can definitely share stuff from other websites. You can share you know, photos or videos, uh, blogs, infographics, but it takes a lot of time to create that material. Um, it can take you know, an hour or two to make a blog or a week to create a video, but 
once it's done, you've got it, it's, it's material, it's share worthy, and it takes just a second to, to post online. Um, but once you've got your networks up and running, it really doesn't take much time to maintain them. Um, but to be more effective, you want to be active all the time. It, it, basically, three times a day you want to post, um, which can be difficult. <laughs> but it's, it's definitely well worth it. Yeah. So what is like the um, shelf life of, of a post? And does it vary from one network to the next? It depends on the content. Um, for instance, you know, if within your blog you're talking about a specific holiday or a, an event, it's only good for that event or that holiday. Um, but there's a lot of informational videos, how-to videos that have a lot of shelf life. You can use them year after year. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on the content. But really, you can reuse or recycle old blog posts or old videos as many times as you want. Mm, okay. Well, very good. Thank you for the information. I appreciate your time and coming in. And if any of you out there would like to speak to Katie in uh, more detail and find out more how she might be able to help you, um, uh, check out her uh, email at the end of this video. And if you'd like to continue this conversation online, please feel free to fill in the comment box below this video. Well, that's all we have for this week. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.